Uh, the average daily intake of lipids uh, by the adults is about 100 grams, 90% of which are triacylglycerols. Triacylglycerols are the compounds content with glycerol and three fatty acids together. Then we have also in the diet phospholipids, mostly represented with the phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidic acid is presented with the two fatty acids joined with the glycerol and phosphoric acid. When it is choline in content, we see phosphatidylcholine. When it is ethanolamine, we see phosphatidylethanolamine. When serine in content, we see phosphatidylethanolamine. When inosine, we see phosphatidylinositol. When there is glycerol, we see phosphatidylglycerol. When three glycerols are in compound of the phosphatidyl, we say that it is cardiolipin. In response to the presence of lipids in diet, the hormones of intestine are secreted into the, for the action of aura and regulation of the uh, function pancreas, gallbladder, and the uh, stomach. Cholecystokinin is most important among them. It contracts gallbladder and releases a bile. Bile is a mixture of bile salts, and also it has got cholesterol, and also phospholipids, then thyroxine hormone, vitamins such as retinol, B2, B12 are present in it, and it also decreases the motility of the gastric juice. Why? Because gastric compound. Why? Because it uh, allows the gastric chemus to enter the uh, uh, intestine slowly. To, uh, um, to help the process of digestion. Then we have also secretin, which causes a pancreas to release juice rich in bicarbonates. These bicarbonates must neutralize pH because gastric juice is rich in acids. And for the action of the intestinal uh, hormones, uh, sorry, intestinal enzymes, we need pH of basic medium. Lupase is the most important enzyme present in intestine and its action depends on the emulsification. Only after emulsification, uh, this action of lipase is really visible and the lipase, uh, the uh, for emulsification means the separation of the big droplets into the little small ones. How do the bile salts do it? Because bile salts have in their content this uh, hydrophobic part, which is represented with cyclopentan perhydrophenantrene, this yellow colored, and uh, blue colored, this uh, hydrophilic compounds OH, and also side chain. This side chain, which is or hydrophilic, it adds to the big droplet and separates it to the small droplet. And this way, these droplets are separated and the, it helps facilitating of the action of lipase because the surface of the lipase action is already increased. The digestion of lipids in adults is so that in mouth and stomach there is no chemical digestion of lipids and the digestion of lipids begins in intestine. Because we have here the bile which is uh, produced in the liver and stored in gallbladder and flows into the intestine only after intake of uh, the food. And uh, bile doesn't uh, contain enzyme but it only helps for the emulsification. Lipase is active only after adding to colipase. Colipase is its coenzyme. Coenzyme is a peptide also synthesized in the pancreas. Lipase and colipase both synthesized in the pancreas joined together make active lipase-colipase complex. And this lipase-colipase complex act on the triacylglycerols, separating them to fatty acids and glycerol. These fatty acids and glycerol are already ready for their absorption. 
Digestive enzyme begins their action only after the action, after the food entered the mouth. And when it entered the mouth, then the stomach and passed to the intestine. In the infants, be, uh, in the infants, the process begins with lingual lipase and gastric lipase because in infants the pH of stomach is about four even more, and these two lipases, lingual and gastric lipases, are also called the acidic lipases. For their activity, this pH is suitable, and uh, they act also on the short length chain and uh, the middle short chain uh, fatty acids. And that's why these milk fatty acids are very suitable for their action. But uh, to repeat, in the adults, they don't have significant activity. In the adult, we have got activity of the enzymes. Firstly, eucritic lipase with colipase, then cholesterol is traced, also synthesized in the pancreas, phospholipase 2, A2, and lysophospholipase. And they are secreted into the intestine, and these pancreatic enzymes enter the intestine to help uh, for the action on the lipids. What about uh, phospholipases? Phospholipases we have got A1 and A2. Lisa uh, phospholipid, which is formed after the action of the phospholipase H2, A2 is very dangerous and toxic compound. And even this phospholipase A2 present in the a snake poison, and that's why it even make uh, the, the air leads to this. But in the uh, intestine, these two uh, phospholipases act together, phospholipase A1 and A2. That's why in this intestine, as a rule, we don't have significant amount of laser phospholipids. But if the phospholipase A2 acts, what happens? Phospholipase A2 separates the second fatty acid, making lysophospholipid. Lysophospholipid then undergoes degradation and separation from fatty acid under the action of phospholipase A1. And after it, the glycerol phosphor base, phosphoryl base is formed. Glycerol phosphoryl base can be already absorbed with the free diffusion way. Also, glycerol itself, phosphoric acid and base, mostly choline, can be formed from the phospholipids and all the three compounds also can be absorbed with the free diffusion in the intestine. So, uh, enzymes involved in digestion, as we see, are phospholipase A2, and this A2 uh, is makes the substrate for the action of the LISA phospholipase and these two enzymes together make for us the fat acid and the phospholipid, phospholipids compounds, uh, these digested uh, compounds, which can be absorbed in the intestine. There is also cholesterol esterase uh, in uh, the intestine, synthesized in the pancreas, and with the help of the water, it converts cholesterol, cholesterol ester to cholesterol and fatty acid. All cholesterol and fatty acid are already ready to for the absorption. Cholesterol can be absorbed both with the absorption with free diffusion and with the missiles, but fatty acids, all, uh, and especially of uh, the higher lens, only with the missiles. And uh, this uh, here uh, on the scheme are represented the cholesterol esters which undergo a uh, cleavage with the action of cholesterol esterase. This is cholesterol with the fatty acid. Fatty acid is removed under the action of cholesterol esterase. Fatty acid already leaves our structure and cholesterol itself is free for the absorption. Also from the phosphatidylcholine, we release from phosphatidylcholine two fatty acids. These two fatty acids uh, are absorbed with semi cells, and phosphatidylcholine, this glycerol phosphocholine, can be absorbed with free diffusion. And triacylglycerol also uh, to this pancreas, uh, pancreatic lipase 
two uh, fatty acids from the position alpha and alpha prime are released from the triacylglycerol and or, uh, already formed beta monoacylglycerol can be absorbed with the intestine by the free diffusion. So beta monoacylglycerol is the glycerol which has the for, uh, fatty acid at the position two. These two positions, alpha and alpha prime, are ready and primarily uh, for the action of the pancreatic lipase. After the formation of these simple compounds, particles which can be easily absorbed in the intestine, the cells are formed. The cells are the, are the droplets for the hydrophobic compounds which cannot be absorbed uh, with the intestine themselves. So in this droplets, hydrophobic part is inside and hydrophobic, uh, hydrophobic outside. Hydrophilic, it means surrounded part with the phospholipids and the bile salts. And inside mostly are fatty acids and beta monoacyl glycerols. So these micelles, micelles enter the they reach our enterocytes and then enter after this entrance beta mono beta monoacyl glycerol join together again with the fatty acid, making again and resynthesizing the triacylglycerol. Triacylglycerol forming here and uh, phospho uh, phospholipids uh, forming here are contained into the chylomicrons. These chylomicrons are too large in diameter to enter the blood. That's why they don't enter the blood, but they enter the lymph. And through the lymph, they are transferred to the body where they are taken and their fatty acids and resolutions are used as the energy source for the cells. Sometimes when the uh, fatty acids cannot be uh, and fats uh, are separated from the diet cannot be absorbed completely uh, in the intestine, they, uh, excess, their excess present in the fat is called steatorrhea. Our lipase is so active that this steatorrhea uh, is absorbed only in very severe diseases, such as celiac disease or the shortened bowel. But normally we have always a normal absorption of the fats, sometimes in a bile insufficiency, in stones, gallbladder, we have also steatorrhea. What happens in steatorrhea? Mostly the fats excreted with the uh, faces, they excrete also with them uh, the essential fatty acids, such as linoleic and linoleic. And also, the fat-soluble vitamins are excreted with the fat with the fats together. After the uh, fat uh, separate parts enter the enterocyte and begins their resynthesis, resynthesis of triacylglycerols, which are characteristic for our body, because we take with the food the fatty acids and resolutions which are characteristic for different uh, origins, but here in our intestine there are resynthesized the fats which are characteristic for our tissues. For this purpose we have taxin taste. Taxin taste is the simple Enzyme and its action is very simple because in two steps the tract is already synthesized. The first step is on the activation of fatty acid when it undergoes the joining with coenzyme A and acyl coenzyme A is already synthesized. For this purpose, ATP you spends the energy of two phosphoric groups converting to AMP, so two macroagic bond. High energy bond are spent for this reaction. After it, acyl coenzyme A is activated. These two acyl coenzyme A's join with beta monoacyl glycerol absorbed in the intestine to form triacyl glycerol. This simple way is characteristic only for the intestine. And activation of fatty acid uh, presented here makes how thiokinase or acyl coenzyme A synthase. Acts. Firstly, it adds with ATP forming as acyl adenylate and then acyl coenzyme A. Last. 
So there is difference between the triacylglycerol synthesis in the liver and intestine. In intestine, we took beta monoacylglycerols and added their activated fatty acids, forming diacylglycerol then triacylglycerol forming. But in the liver, we use glycerol 3 phosphate and we form lisa phosphatidate, then phosphatidate and diacylglycerol. Finally, this diacylglycerol is converted to triacylglycerol. So the way in the liver is different and it is used for the formation of glycerol 3, -phosphate, glycerol 3 phosphate in the liver. We can use two ways. First is from the active glycerol because in liver we have glycerol kinase, which use ATP donating its phosphoric group for the activation of glycerol and forming phosphoric group on it and giving us glycerol 3 phosphate. This way presents only in the liver, but not in adipose tissue. In adipose tissue and in the liver, both present this way forming of glycerol phosphate from dihydroxyacetone phosphate. As we know, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is the intermediate of uh, glycolysis. So glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase with NAD H donating hydrogens converted to glycerol 3 phosphate. And after the glycerol phosphate is formed, the synthesis of TAC lipogenesis begins. We add their first fatty acid, then the second fatty acid, then remove phosphate from the structure and add the third fatty acid forming the triacylglycerol. In the liver we have also the way of uh, the synthesis of uh, triacylglycerol on dihydroxyacetone phosphate and, and finally we also synthesize triacylglycerol. But in adipose tissue uh, despite the fact that we have uh, the way of glucose uh, of the synthesis glycerol 3-phosphate uh, forming from glucose, but this way also is elaborated with low glucose <coughs> with low glucose in the blood. When glucose is lowered and insulin is lowered also, the glycolysis, you know, uh, stop it in the adipose tissue as this process already doesn't allow us to form dihydroxyacetone phosphate. That's why this glycerol phosphate formation also is lowered. And that's why the synthesis of triacylglycerols is limited in the fasting. That's why if we have the diet which is not rich in carbohydrates, the triacylglycerols uh, diet, uh, the triacylglycerol synthesis also is limited and the weight gain is impossible. Weight gain is always larger when we have diet rich in carbohydrates. What happens when uh, we have the diet uh, poor in carbohydrates? Triacylglycerol undergo degradation with two, three fatty acids and glycerol and as oh, the glycerol cannot uh, be converted to the triacylglycerols, it leaves the uh, adipose tissue and enters the blood. From the blood, it is conveyed to the liver. In the liver, it is used for its needs. For uh, the synthesis of phosph uh, phospholipids and triacylglycerols, we synthesize phosphatidic acid. Phosphatidic acid can be synthesized for both these tag and phospholipid synthesis and here for its precursor is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate as we know converted firstly to glycerol 3 phosphate with a reduction or with the need H2 and then when uh, the fatty acid activated donates its acyl group monoacylglycerol phosphate is formed. When the second acyl group is donated to our group for our monoacylglycerol and joins there, phosphatidic acid is already formed and then it is used in the synthesis triacylglycerols or phosphoric phospholipids by the same way. It depends on our need. So diacylglycerols form a converted to glycerol 3 phospholipids, monoacylglycerol, phosphatidic acid, when we need, they go to the pathway of phospholipids or undergo phos the 
uh, phospholipid uh, phosphoric group is, is yielding and forms diacylglycerol, and then adding the third uh, acyl group undergoes formation of three acylglycerols. In phospholipid synthesis, we use activated uh, diacylglycerol. It is CDP diacylglycerol, citidine diphosphate. So, phosphatidic acid is, its structure is glycerol added with two, joined with two acyl groups, fatty acids, and phosphoric group. This is phosphatidic acid. For activation, it adds with citidine 3 phosphate and forms. CDP, citidine diphosphate diacylglycerol. Then citidine diphosphate diacylglycerol is already ready to add any serine or inosine or glycerol to form any phospholipid. For example, adding serine, we form phosphatidyl serine. If we add inosine, we, add, we form phosphatidyl inositol. When we decarboxylate it, it forms phosphatidyl ethanol amine. And when we add glycerol, phosphatidyl glycerol also can be formed. Uh, when these uh, uh, triacylglycerols and phospholipids are formed, and mostly they are formed in the liver, they are packed into the lipoproteins. And these lipoproteins are mostly high of high density and low density lipoproteins presented in the blood. Uh, in the liver are formed high-density lipoproteins and where low-density lipoproteins, where low-density lipoproteins then in their, uh, in their blood and, uh, get matured in, uh, to form low-density lipoproteins. Low-density lipoproteins, they give the fats triacyl and uh, triacylglycerols to the tissues. While the high-density lipoproteins, they take the exceed amount of triacylglycerols and phospholipids, uh, mostly triacylglycerols and fats, from the tissues and bring them to the liver. That's why sometimes in the literature, uh, literature uh, the uh, scientists say that High-density lipoproteins are good, but low-density lipoproteins are bad. But it isn't right because we need both of them. We need supply of these fats for our tissues because they are suppliers of energy for our organs. And high-density lipoproteins also we need because they take the exceed amount of them and bring to the liver. Lipoprotein lipase is one of uh, the important enzymes which present in the capillary of our uh, mostly in adipose, in liver tissue, in uh, also in uh, the lungs. This uh, lipoprotein lipase it uh, makes mostly uh, uh, it affects only chylomicrons and uh, takes triacylglycerols and uh, separate them to the fatty acids. These fatty acids are taken from or uh, with any tissue, for example, the heart tissue, the muscle, the adipose tissue, and after it, our chylomicrons uh, are converted to the remnant chylomicrons. These uh, remnant chylomicrons are taken with the liver and their uh, compounds are taken to the formation of the very low density lipoproteins and lipoproteins of high density. Hyperlipoproteinemias are the uh, in a widespread uh, disease which are uh, the defects of uh, some of enzymes uh, which participate in the metabolism of lipoproteins. For example, uh, in absence of lipoprotein lipase, hyperchylomicronemia occurs and it leads to chylomicrons rise in the blood and it leads to formation of nodules on the, uh, on the uh, hands. Uh, it is called also, also primarily hyperlipoproteinemia. There is also the uh, 2A and 2B uh, familiar hypercholesterolemia because this lipoproteinemia is rich in low density lipoproteins and cholesterol, as cholesterol is mostly present in these lipoproteins, that's why it leads to a rise of cholesterol in the blood. Combined is to be because in uh, where low density lipoproteins are more triacylglycerols in low density lipoproteins cholesterol. That's why in this uh, combined form of lipo, uh, hyperlipoproteinemia, both cholesterol and triacylglycerols rise in the blood. 
level of uh, the court's rule is uh, rapidly raised in the familiar this, uh, uh, this bit lipoproteinemia because it is the fact of uh, their receptors which must join with these remnants of uh, lipoproteins of low density and that's why they remain in the blood and remaining they circulate too much making uh, them uh, of, uh, of course, uh, narrowing uh, the vessels and uh, they uh, prevent the flowing of uh, the blood in the, uh, in the vessels. And the fourth is familiar hyperlipemia, which is induced with the intake of large amount of calories diet uh, rich in the carbohydrates. Major lipoproteinemia per types, so summarizing, we can say this is the first hyperlipoproteinemia with lipoprotein deficiency and hypercholesterolemia and the familiar dyslipoproteinemia. And this uh, beta lipoproteinemia or lipoproteinemia uh, is uh, mostly it uh, affects the heart, the vessels, and uh, it can uh, lead to the acute uh, heart deficiency heart attacks and uh, it uh, is very severe in a severe disease uh, because symptoms uh, uh, appear in first year of life and in young childhood. Uh, nodules with uh, lipid xanthomas are mostly the result of lipoprotein lipase deficiency so these nodules are rich, uh, are rich in of uh, the uh, lipids, mostly triacylglycerols. And this is the vessel inside. Uh, in this narrowing is a result of the uh, lipids uh, which are stored here and uh, the lipoproteins. Uh, they don't allow the blood normal flowing in it and that's why it leads to ischemic now process sometimes in the extremities or uh, mostly in the heart. Uh, then about the synthesis of fatty acids, when we take uh, the food and uh, the food is rich in fats and in carbohydrates. So glucose is converted and, uh, to acetylcoenzyme A. This acetylcoenzyme A is converted to malonylcoenzyme A and malonylcoenzyme A joins with acyl-carrying protein to participate in the synthesis of fatty acids. And acyl-carrying protein is already indicator that this uh, compound will be involved in the synthesis process. After it is uh, beta ketobutyryl formed, then with uh, reducing with needed pH to hydroxybutyryl acyl-carrying protein, and with uh, yielding water anoil acyl carrying protein and the second reducing give us the first uh, fatty acid short four carbon atoms of butyryl acyl carrying protein then it enters the next cycle of these processes and the cycle repeats seven times till we reach the palmitic acid that's why formation that's why this uh, process is called palmitate synthase Enzyme is called palmitate synthase, and this process is called synthesis of fatty acid. Of course, regulation of uh, this uh, process is under their uh, hormones, glucagon and adrenaline, which are the uh, hormones of one is of hunger, the second is of anger. They stop the action of acetylcoenzyme A carboxylase. Acetylcoenzyme A carboxylase is the enzyme which is the first in uh, which uh, converts acetylcoenzyme A to malonylcoenzyme A and makes then malonyl acyl carrying protein uh, for the uh, participation of uh, in the synthesis of fat acid. And stopping this committed step, we stop all the process. And uh, the insulin uh, opposite to it is to stimulate this process. Straight also uh, participate in the formation of uh, acet yielding of acetylcoenzyme A stimulates this process. Uh, NIC H2 participates mostly in the process of degradation of fatty acids, while NADPH2 mostly in the synthesis of fatty acids. And sources of NADPH2 mostly are the pentose phosphate pathway or, or hexose monophosphate pathway called. And also malic enzyme. 
So malic enzyme is the enzyme which is activated after the citrate converts to oxaloacetate because oxaloacetate forming malate is uh, which is substrate for malic enzyme. Malic enzyme forms from NADP, NADPH2, and this NADPH2 is source for our fatty acid synthesis. Regulation of committed step, formation of uh, the malonyl coenzyme. And this is reaction is catalyzed with acetyl coenzyme carboxylase. It is, of course, uh, under the control of our enzyme uh, of our hormones, insulin, citrate, ATP, acetyl coenzyme. So, the hormones glucagon and adrenaline. They stop the action of this enzyme because they are their hormones of hunger and anger. And that's why in this situation we need no synthesis, we need mostly breakdown of the fatty acids. But insulin is the hormone of well-fed state, that's why in its presence and a high level in the blood, this reaction is activated. Also citrate, which is indicator and signal of presence of high energy, ATP also of high energy in the uh, cell, acetyl coenzyme also. They are the ZIC signal which stimulates this acetyl coenzyme carboxylase reaction and it leads to formation of malonyl coenzyme, malonyl acetyl after malonyl coenzyme adds to joints to the acyl carrying protein, it is already committed step for the formation of the fatty acids. Now citrate activates this step. Firstly, citrate is formed in the mitochondrion. It is formed from the oxaloacetate when acetyl coenzyme joins to the uh, to the acetyl coenzyme and the oxaloacetate and forms citrate. Then citrate leaves the mitochondrion and enters the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, it is signaled for the uh, acetyl coenzyme carboxylase and also is the way for the formation of the NADPH2 with help of the malate enzyme. And citrate for the citrate entry to the cytoplasm, this way shortly is uh, seen here on the steam. This citrate enters the cytoplasm, and acetyl coenzyme released from the citrate is used for the fatty acid synthesis. Biotin is coenzyme of the carboxylase, acetyl coenzyme carboxylase, is activated form is uh, carbon dioxide with ATP activated and it adds to our biotin and it is called already biocetin. This biocetin giving its uh, carbon group to the acetyl coenzyme converts to malonyl coenzyme. So this carbon is added to acetyl coenzyme making the third carbon in malonyl coenzyme. And biotin itself again converts to its previous form biotin and takes again the next carbon gas in active form. Then number of acyl coenzyme A and malonyl coenzyme A need pH2s in the palmitic acid synthesis. As for palmitic acid synthesis, we need seven cycles. So seven acetyl coenzyme A converted to malonyl coenzyme A are used in the acetyl coenzyme carboxylase reaction. So, seven malonyl coenzyme A and added only one acetyl coenzyme A are used for palmitate reaction. Then we use also 14 NADPH2 because for each cycle we use 2 NADPH. That's why for seven cycle we use 14 NADPH. And in the end we synthesize palmitate. That's why this enzyme is called palmitate synthase. And sometimes we need the elongation of our chains because palmitate has only, seven, uh, only 16 carbon atoms, but sometimes we need 16, 12, etc., uh, 20 and more carbon atoms in our fatty acid. And for this purpose, we always 
for addition of any carbons, we always use molonyl coenzyme A as sources of carbon atoms. This molonyl provides us with two carbons. The last carbon is released from the molecular and is already yielded in the base. Then fatty acid is elongated and the enzyme performing this reaction is called elongase. And it uh, is uh, in the uh, elongation uh, in the endoplasmic reticle when the process of the synthesis fatty acid uh, occurs in the cytoplasm then for the elongation it enters the endoplasmic reticulum and elongase performs this reaction of addition melanin coenzyme A and formation of very long fatty acid to form very long fat chain for the sometimes for the vaccine sometimes for our own for the fatty acids which are used for example in the formation of our brain tissue Sometimes we need desaturation. Desaturation is, conver is uh, converted with a desaturase. Desaturase, this electron transport, is with a cytochrome B5 and it is also uh, an ADP for its action. And desaturase makes double bond. The more double bonds we have got, the more these desaturase reactions participate in the reactions. In despite the fact we have got this reaction, but the uh, fatty acids such as limolic and linoleic acids remain on, uh, essential. They remain essential for our body and they must be taken with the diet. Now about the beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is very similar to fatty acid synthesis with very sm small distinction between them. Always we use the carrier for all both processes synthesis and beta oxidation. And we uh, only for fat acid synthesis we used NADPH2 and we use the reaction of the reduction. When in oxidation, of course, we use the, uh, the uh, of course, for the uh, as it is oxidation, that's why we make the hydrogenation reaction and we take the hydrogens from these compounds and for this purpose we use fate containing the hydrogenases and NAD containing the hydrogenases. So first uh, fate the hydrogenase take, uh, taking us of uh, the hydrogens from the acyl coenzyme. The second NAD the hydrogenase take acyls from hydroxy acyl the hydrogenase. But the intermediate uh, reaction, intermediate reaction in the uh, between these two steps is the similar. When in fatty acid synthesis was removal of water, here we add water in the beta oxidation. In the end step, we have acetyl coenzyme A, which means removal of two carbon atoms intermediate from our fatty acid and shortening of our fatty acid to two carbon atom compound. So beta oxidation, uh, it uh, means that this is the fatty acid coenzyme A. It is called acyl coenzyme A. Of course, before the fatty acid undergoes uh, degradation, it undergoes activation in the reaction acyl coenzyme A synthase. Acyl coenzyme A synthase, as a rule, use ATP converted to AMP and after it, Acyl coenzyme A is formed and this acyl coenzyme A enters our reaction. Acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase with FADH2 gives us the uh, next compound, enoyl coenzyme A, which has already double bond. This double bond then already with adding of water is converted to hydroxy acyl coenzyme A and with this hydroxy acyl coenzyme A then with the second dehydrogenation, dehydrogenation is converted to beta keta acyl coenzyme A. The last thiolase reaction, keta beta keta thiolase reaction with the assistance of beta keta thiolase removes this acetyl coenzyme A, which is two compound two carbons contains and remains shortened for two carbons fatty acids. This is comparison between beta oxidation and fatty acid synthesis. As we see in this synthesis, there were 
there were the addition of malonyl-coenzyme A. All this uh, malonyl-coenzyme A has three carbons in its uh, content, and all this one was released in the form of carbon gas, and two were added. That's why all this, the addition was in the elongation of two uh, carbon atoms. Here in the, uh, the beta oxidation, we always remove this two carbon compound from our fatty acid in the form acetyl coenzyme A. And here we clearly see as fatty H2 and uh, fatty H2 and NAD H2 are formed with cleavage of acetyl. This page shows how to count the molecules of NADH2, FADH2, ETPs formed from one saturated fatty acid. For example, from palmitic acid are formed 106 ATPs. And the short way for their countation is also present here. So, in beta oxidation, from the palmitic acid are formed 106 uh, ATPs, which can be counted with the 7n minus 6 formula. It is the easiest formula for this. Now about ketone bodies. They are always formed with the liver in the, uh, of course, in the low concentration they present in the blood, while they, now also in the fasting, they, uh, their synthesis is raised very rapidly. So normally glucose always present in our uh, blood and it converted to pyruvate. And in well fed state we have also fatty acids which undergo beta oxidation. Both these products, glucose and fatty acid, give us acetyl coenzyme A. This acetyl coenzyme A normally enters Krebs cycle and with Krebs cycle it gives us in oxidative phosphorylation ATP provides us with energy. When glucose is in low level, so the Krebs cycle important compound oxaloacetate formed from pyruvate is already lowered too. That's why it cannot accept acetyl coenzyme A. And the first reaction of Krebs cycle is already lowered. Acetyl coenzyme A enters the next pathway, synthesis of ketone bodies. Formation of ketone bodies begins from the uh, condensation of two acetyl coenzyme A's, and they form acetoacetyl coenzyme A. The third molecule of acetyl coenzyme A joining to them forms hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A. Among the students, they it is called oh my god coenzyme A. Uh, this enzyme forming hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A is called hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A synthase. The next enzyme, hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A lase, forms already the first ketone body, acetoacetate. However, acetoacetate isn't the most uh, previous uh, ketone bodies in the blood. The previous is beta hydroxybutyrate formed with the hydration. And after, uh, when we add the uh, hydrogen on the acid acetate, uh, acetate, we have beta hydroxybutyrate, and it is about 75% of all the ketone bodies present in the blood. Acetone also can be formed from the acetone after yielding the carbon gas. And acetone is the compound which cannot be used by the body. That's why it is only excreted with the breeze. Ketone body synthesis here is presented the wide way. So thiolase makes the first reaction, the connection of two acetyl coenzyme A with yielding coenzyme A uh, acetyl, uh, with HS coenzyme A. Then acid acetyl coenzyme A joins with the third acetyl coenzyme A, forming omega coenzyme A. And this reaction is rate limiting for the ketone body synthesis. However, for the cholesterol synthesis, the rate limiting synthesis is the next step when mevalonic acid is synthesized. And omega coenzyme A, hydroxymethyl glutaryl coenzyme A, this compound is common for the cholesterol synthesis and ketone bodies synthesis together. So in metabolism of ketone bodies in ketogenesis, we observed these four steps. 
First, sale is made a solicitate coin same firm. Then, acid acetate then added with the third uh, acetyl group and hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A synthase forms for us hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A. Then lyase forms acetoacetate with yielding carbon gas. It can tear, it converts to acetone and reducing it converted to beta hydroxybutyrate. In ketoly ketolysis, which occurs in all the uh, cells except the liver, all of this process uh, happens. Uh, all liver deketogenesis occurs in the liver, but only liver doesn't use ketone bodies for their for its action. All the uh, cells, even the brain, can use ketone bodies, and especially the muscle cells, are uh, where. Uh, the, the, uh, the ketone bodies are very useful for them for the energy fuel. So beta hydroxybutyrate, uh, uh, which is prevalent in the blood, it enters firstly in the cell. It undergoes the, the, uh, the reaction of uh, the losing to hydrogens, uh, which conversion or to acetacetate. And then acetacetate undergoes the activation with succinyl coenzyme A, which provides this coenzyme A for it and makes acetyl coenzyme A. Then acetyl coenzyme A entirely this reaction gives us two acetyl coenzyme A and these two acetyl coenzyme A each gives us 10 ATPs in Krebs cycle. Uh, how do they enter the Krebs cycle? It is called ketolysis, so beta hydroxybutyrate uh, immediately entering uh, the cell give us two NADH2s. So this dehydrogenase reaction gives already these two NADH2s. Each of them give us 2.5 ATPs for the energy. That's why in uh, diabetes mellitus, when uh, the ketone bodies are the most uh, important uh, energy providers for the cells, and especially muscle cells, this uh, well, uh, this uh, the well energy providing step is the uh, very uh, rapid way of the energy providing for the cell because this already gives us 2.5 ATPs. The next step with formation acetyl coenzymase, two acetyl coenzymase, also is rich in energy because any acetyl coenzymase gives us. 10 ATP, so that's why we can say that one beta hydroxybutyrate gives us 20 ATPs from the acetyl coenzymes and also 2.5 uh, ATPs from NADH2 formed in he is the hydrogenase reaction. We have also cholesterol, very important compound of the lipids formed in our cells. Cholesterol can be synthesized in many uh, cells, but mostly in the liver. In liver also, it begins with acetyl coenzyme A, and this acetyl is synthesized just the same way as ketone bodies. Then the third acetyl coenzyme A is added here as in ketone body synthesis, and hemagu coenzyme A is already ready for our uh, reaction. Uh, when this hemagu coenzyme A is synthesized, this mevalonate formation, it is hemagocoenzyme reductase enzyme, which makes mevalonate for us. It is rate-limiting and committing step in cholesterol synthesis. The statin drugs, which prevent the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver, they are used for stop of the cholesterol synthesis in the patients with high cholesterol in the blood. Mevalonate then is converted to isopentanyl perphosphate, which then uh, can be isomerized to dimethyl allyl uh, perphosphate. Dimethyl allyl perphosphate uh, then condenses with isopentanyl perphosphate and makes farnesyl perphosphate. And together, farnesyl perphosphates give us squalene. Squalene then, uh, then makes cyclization forming lanosterol. So lanosterol is the first cyclic form in the step of formation cholesterol. Then leaving three carbons from lanosterol, we receive cholesterol. Cholesterol is very important compound for our cells. That's why it is under the regulation of our hormones and of, of our ATP, AMP, of our 
uh, well fit, uh, well fit state situation. When we are well fit, of course, the uh, insulin is raised in the blood and it stimulates the reaction, limiting this step. Uh, and the limiting step is hemagoenzyme formation of uh, conversion to the mevalonic acid. It is omega coenzyme reductase reaction. This reaction in the cholesterol synthesis is stimulated with insulin. That's why when we eat and we are in a well-fed state, insulin rises in the blood and stimulates this step and it stimulates the next all reactions so cholesterol synthesis arises in our blood. It is very favorable for us because cholesterol is very important for many compounds reusable for our body. Uh, glucagon, and, uh, which is uh, the hormone of hunger, and AMP, which is also a signal of hunger, they stop this reaction of synthesis, and this rate-limiting step already is uh, turned off. And acetyl coenzyme A, also it's present in our cells, also is necessary in the diet for the formation of cholesterol. Cholesterol usage in the cell is in many ways, firstly for vitamin D3, and its uh, seven hydrocholesterol is formed from the cholesterol. Then uh, it converts to the aldosterone, which is necessary, uh, very important and um, a major mineral corticoid, the hormone of the cortex, uh, adrenal cortex, then uh, cortisol and all the cort uh, cortex hormones, then the hormone testosterone, which is converted to estradiol, also the uh, bilose uh, acids, the bile acids primary and secondary also are formed cholesterol. And additionally, cholesterol is very important compound of our cells because the cells are have uh, they are formed from the lipids layer, and this lipid layers is uh, can is formed from the cholesterol to phospholipids in the ratio one to one. So no one can say that cholesterol is uh, bad for the body. No, of course, cholesterol is very useful as we see from this scheme. We only need to control our cholesterol, not to eat, not to be too raised and not to be dangerous for our health.